Welcome everybody to the Hermosa Beach Chamber of Commerce Candidate Forum. My name is Lenny LaRocca. I'm a member of the Hermosa Beach Chamber Board of Directors, and I'll be monitoring the questions tonight. I'd like to take a quick moment just to welcome our new president and CEO, Michelle Crispin. First, if I could, I'd like to tell you some facts about the chamber. So we have 480 members as of today, the largest member base of all the beach cities. We advocate, promote, and market our mentor, our member businesses more than ever before. Chamber members consist of business owners, nonprofits, artists, and civic members. I encourage you to look at our directory of members in the Truly Hermosa magazine. We are not part of the city, but an independent nonprofit formed in 1912. Yes, 1912. That was a few years ago. Our board of directors is currently made of 16 directors who set the course of our chamber. We have many board members here with us tonight. Please raise your hand if you're a board member. And as I like to say, thank you to all my bosses. There you go. <laughs> the chamber has a foundation which was formed in 2021, and its founding members of which I belong are around 50 local residents and businesses. If you're interested in joining the foundation, please see Michelle or Millie. The chamber and its foundation are happy to produce community events, including Fiesta Hermosa, Oktoberfest, coming up, St. Patrick's Day Parade, Hermosa for the Holidays, and the Best of Hermosa Awards, which we honor the person of the year. We also produce the sidewalk sales and co-sponsor other local events. Our Visitors Bureau, component of the chamber, just released new Truly Hermosa Pocket Guides. Please be, please be sure to grab one today. And the, are those here, Michelle? Uh, no, we don't have those. Oh, so <laughs> we won't be able to grab one today. The yeah, there you go. Um, OK, about the, tonight's forum. Now let me tell you a little bit about the forum tonight. The chamber does not endorse any candidates, but does encourage businesses to learn about and advocate for the candidates that will get our business community to the next level. The questions tonight are unknown to the candidates. The questions were collected from member submissions, past forum content, and individual board members' input. The final questions were then approved by the executive board. Tonight's forum is not a debate where follow-up will be asked of candidates. That said, we encourage the audience to take note of positions and inquire directly with the candidates if you have any more questions for them. Okay, so on to the forum business. Now we will begin with the introductions. Each candidate is allotted two minutes to introduce themselves and tell us what a perfect day in Hermosa looks like to them. We will begin with Seat number one, I guess that's you, Mike. Is that seat number one? Yes, sir. Perfect. Yeah. And just yeah. to confirm, just uh, opening with a perfect day in Hermosa Beach? Yes, sir. Perfect. So first off, thank you to the Chamber for hosting this forum tonight. Uh, really excited to be sitting up here. Um, and thank you all for joining us. It's a packed house. Two Monday night football games. Um, or I've been serving on city council for the last five years. Um, it's been in the greatest honor of my life so far. Um, just a little bit about me, I've moved to Hermosa 15 years ago, fell in love with the beach culture, which I think all of us have, and that's why we're here and so invested in our community. Uh, when I met my wife and we got married eight years ago, we knew this is where we wanted to raise our family. Uh, we have two kids in the Hermosa Beach School District. Um, they are in first and preschool. And ever since we had kids, I had a whole new appreciation for uh, the community where we live. Uh, just walking on the sidewalk, seeing the accessibility issues, going to the park pretty much every day. Um, and then to parlay that into, a, professionally I'm a fire captain for the City of Riverside Fire Department. Uh, I'm also a fiduciary trustee, uh, managing over $300 million um, for medical expense reimbursement plan for firefighters nationwide. Um, and then perfect day for me, dropping the kids off at school at 8.30. Um, hopefully my wife goes to work at noon, so we have um, a little routine is we either go get Coffee in the morning, we walk down to Martha's, get a white corn scramble, walk, on, walk along the beach. Um, if we didn't bring the dog, we'll go on the walk with the dog. She goes off to work. Um, and usually I have one or two phone calls throughout the day um, with council business, uh, meeting with business owners, different stakeholders, community groups, 
Um, and then picking up the school, pick, picking up from the kids at school. Uh, my daughter is in AYSO, I'm an assistant coach there. Love uh, teaching the youth um, about teamwork and enjoying um, sports, uh, the competitive nature. And uh, then because my wife is working and get to put the kids to bed, which is a time that I truly cherish. And so Hermosa Beach is just one of those family friendly communities and I'm honored to serve for the last five years and look forward to serving another four. Thank you. Johnny. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here in front of mentors, friends, and the community. Uh, I wanna thank the Chamber for putting on this event and the other candidates for caring enough about our city to run for city council. My name is Yanni Lang, 47 years old, and I'm a born and raised native in Hermosa Beach. Uh, my parents still live in town. My wife's a kindergarten teacher here at Hermosa View, and I have three kids who have gone through the system. My daughter's a cheerleader at Maricosta. Despite me going to Redondo, that's okay. Um, <laughs> speaking of schools, I went to St. Cross. I went to North School. I went to Hermosa Valley. I did go to Redondo, went to El Camino, and ultimately finished school at uh, Long Beach State. But I tell everybody that I got my degree from the University of Hermosa Beach. As a result, that has shaped who I am and has allowed me to craft a professional life that allows me to raise a family and stay in Hermosa Beach. And that's why it is an, my absolute honor to serve as a city commissioner for the past 10 years. As a city commissioner, I've had the opportunity to help improve the quality of life for Hermosa Beach families and seniors. As a commissioner and board member of the Chamber of Commerce, I've been able to create opportunities for local businesses. And I've organized major events that have raised the profile of Hermosa Beach as a fun destination. And I'm also a founding member of the Hermosa Chamber Foundation. As a member of the Hermosa Beach Fire Service Citizens Advisory Committee, I've helped deepen our commitment to public safety. I've, I have a great life, pardon me. I have a great life growing up here in Hermosa Beach and I want all the other young people in town to have that same experience. That's why I volunteer to serve on the Measure S Citizens Oversight Committee that helped fund three of our schools. Um, perfect day in Hermosa Beach. Every day is a perfect day in Hermosa Beach. But I like to get up, check the waves, surf 16th Street, go home, make breakfast for the kids, uh, stop by Spider with one of my clients, check out my daughter while she's working there, and then go on a strand cruise. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Johnny. Brian? Hi, everybody. My name's Brian Scheel, and I'm honored to be here with the distinguished guests. Uh, my perfect day in Hermosa Beach is free parking for everyone and an extra four spots above your house. Uh, I've lived in Hermosa Beach for 29 years. Uh, the newspapers keep uh, referring to me as a comedian, uh, and it's true, I am a comedian. Um, but honestly, um, I don't know how many jokes you have to tell to buy a house in Hermosa Beach, but that's a lot of jokes. <laughs> I'm a business person. I run production for a lot of shows, uh, things that you've probably seen. For example, I'm working now on America's Funniest Videos uh, right at Manhattan Beach Studios. As a matter of fact, if you read the credits, my name, Brian Scheel, are the biggest letters on the credits because I'm the guy who types in the credits. <laughs> and uh, I get to work on a lot of shows, and it, I've been blessed to live here and work with a lot of the um, restaurants, the Comedy and Magic Club for a long time. Um, I wanted to say that it's, I, these people that I work with on, on the television shows are very, very passionate egomaniacs. These are long days and this has really prepared me to serve with our city council. <laughs> you might notice my, um, my referee shirt under my jacket, and if you saw the last meeting, you know that what we need here in Hermosa Beach is a referee. I'd like to say I'm not a newcomer to this town. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Steve and George before COVID, uh, Montrose Audio Video ran all of the video production in our council chambers. I used to record all the council meetings on VHS tape and walk them down to the Adelphia Cable. Anybody remember Adelphia Cable? Well, it was a torturous to watch those meetings now as it was then. So I humbly ask for your vote for city council. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. 
Alka, you want to go next? Um, sure. Thank you all for being here. This is what makes Hermosa Beach great. Um, people who are engaged and who care about the community. So thank you. Um, I grew up here and attended local schools. I went to Valley Vista, Pier Avenue, and Miracosta. My mom still lives here. She's next door, and I raised my daughter here. But when my family moved here from Germany, I didn't know a word of English. And the community embraced me. And I still remember the second grade when I arrived scared, not knowing anyone. And those friends are lifelong friends that are still with me today. So um, I grew up here, like many kids, going to the beach, um, playing volleyball, surfing, and skateboarding. That was all before cell phones, so we watched out for each other, and uh, our parents watched out for each other. I didn't realize how lucky I was until I went off to college and started working. I love Hermosa Beach. I love the people who live here. You're smart, hardworking, you care about the environment, and you're very opinionated. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I have worked as a reporter and television news producer most of my life, um, and now it is time for me to give back. I have the time and the energy to give this job 110%. I'll make um, sure we have a well-run city, that puts residents and businesses first. My experience and skill set um, will make me an addition to the council. A vote for me is a vote for Hermosa. Thank you. Thanks, Elka. We're having a little problem with the audio with Michael, or is it Michael up? Michael, can you hear? OK, that's scary. Okay. Hello? Yep. Great. We can hear you. Um, can you put in an AirPod, Michael? AirPod, Michael? Um, I don't have one handy, no. So I'll just put it on speaker. Um, okay. Um, just, um, I guess, mute it when you're not talking to him. All right, um, I, don't have any, I, don't have, I don't have anyone in the room, so I'm not going to talk over people. Uh -huh. yeah, so, so he hasn't heard anything, so uh, he's a question. Okay, Michael, so here's a quick question for you we, with a two-minute uh, answer by you. Um, would you describe a perfect day in Hermosa, what that looks like um, to you? Perfect day in Hermosa and what that looks like? That's an interesting question. Um, a perfect day in Hermosa looks like um, sunny weather, um, people out enjoying the outdoors, um, roller skating, uh, bicycling, walking, uh, swimming in the water, um, shopping in some of our local stores. Uh, that would be obviously good for the Chamber of Commerce. Um, uh, I would say having a uh, some fun in the plaza, maybe doing um, some kind of small event or using the middle of the plaza a little more than we do now and making it uh, more, put the fun back into the plaza maybe. That would be a perfect day. I think that we could use some interest in the center of the plaza. I've talked to some merchants and we need to maybe keep using our public spaces. We used to run more events um, throughout the year and I think that would be fun, uh, just smaller scale to bring in um, people to shop and buy goods. So that's that's my uh, perfect day in Hermosa. And then uh, and then having a nightlife that's uh, fun, exciting, people eating, dining, and probably not too much um, late night uh, partying or any kind of uh, vandalism coming home, you know, from the bars or parking in the neighborhoods. So that's the perfect day. Michael, with the le Michael, leftover time the, that you have, tell the group a little bit about yourself as well, please. I'm a, I'm a 38 year resident, a uh, homeowner, uh, husband and father. I have a 14 year old uh, boy at Redondo Union High School and a daughter, 18, who's at um, Da Vinci High School in El Segundo and he graduates this year. 
Um, I've uh, enjoyed, I, I came to Hermosa Beach straight out of college. I went to work for a developer, uh, Tishman uh, Construction and Realty in Westwood, um, California. Worked there for five years, became an assistant vice president, um, left that and I went into real estate on my own and did that for a, a short time. And then um, I started open bakeries and I opened up five different bakeries throughout Los Angeles, one in Torrance, Westwood, Pasadena, Northridge. And then I had an operation in the airport where I had three license locations. Um, I sold some of that uh, off and then later ran for city council and served two terms. And I, before that, I actually was a public works commissioner. Hey, hey Mike, I'm gonna have to, um, Mike, I'm gonna have to cut you off there if that's okay, my friend. That, that's the problem with being older. <laughs> so we'll continue. So the next phase of our meeting will be yes and no questions. So candidates, you should have a paddle in front of you. Um, you might want to make sure you know which side is yes and which side is no. Uh, Michael, do you have a paddle in front of you? Uh, yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so to start, we're going to ask you some questions that you'll answer with your paddle. Question number one. And again, you do not have to answer any of these questions quickly, so think about it. And we'll wait for everyone to raise their paddles. So please wait until I've completed the question to raise your paddle for all to see. Please do not lower your paddle until I've said, ready. Here we go. Have you served on the Hermosa-based nonprofit board or advisory group? Ready. Thank you. Question, question number two. Do you support Measure HV for the Hermosa Beach School District? Ready? Thank you. Question number three. Do you support establishing an economic development division committee or employee consultant within our city that generates policies resulting in additional commerce, investment, and resources in Hermosa Beach? Thank you. Question number four. A city council discussion occurred in the spring about restricting ground floor office space in our commercial zone to ensure prime commercial space is reserved for pedestrian businesses like retail and restaurants. Many years ago, Manhattan Beach implemented a ground floor office space restriction to push office spaces to the second floor. The argument behind this effort suggests that ground floor office space takes away from the potential pedestrian friendly businesses and increase traf tra uh, increased tra foot traffic. Do you support implementing zoning code changes that would restrict or prohibit ground floor office space in downtown Hermosa Beach? Ready, thank you. Question number five, do you smart, smart? <laughs> do you support measure HB, the three quarter cent sales tax increase? I think my paddle's broken. Thank you. Thank you. My paddle's stuck. Question number six. Do you support four weeks of free parking in downtown area during the holiday season, Thanksgiving to Christmas, and even if the tax measure does not pass? Thank you. Question seven. Business improvement districts, known as BID, B-I-D, B -I -D, are popular in many cities to help fund improving security, cleanliness, and marketing of business districts. The Chamber is seeking a partnership with the City of Hermosa to form a TID, Tourism Investment District, 
where a very small fee is added to each hotel night stay in Hermosa to fund the marketing Hermosa Beach and tourism efforts. Do you support the formation of a TID? Thank you. That's a maybe. That's a maybe. That is a solid maybe right there, Kevin. Question number eight. Would you support larger scale event applications that come to town like Rams Draft Day, Galaxy World Cup, and the most recent Hermosa Open? Thank you, ready. Okay, so now we'll move on to the questions. So I'll ask the question and then ask uh, you to respond. And I believe their, uh, Michelle, their response is how long? 90 seconds. You have 90 seconds to respond to the following questions. And I'll alternate uh, who's answering first, second, third, et cetera. So question number one. For, for, an, for answering questions, we will begin with seat number one. I guess, Mike, you're the lucky person. And then alternate each question, beginning with the next person in line. I will call names so it's not confusing. Each candidate will have exactly 90 seconds, one and a half minutes, to answer the question. Chamber President Michelle Crispin will be running the timer, and she will raise the 15-second paddle when you have 15 seconds left. You will be cut off and cannot exceed one minute. It cannot exceed one minute. We have 90 seconds, sorry. We apologize in advance if I have to cut anyone off. We have to keep time to keep the fairness. Your time will not begin until I ask the question. Ready? Very good. Mr. Mike, what strategies or ideas do you have to bring commerce and generate additional revenue for both our downtown and non-downtown businesses? Well, thank you for that question. Um, I had the unique privilege of serving on the Economic Development Subcommittee, um, which was made up of two city council members and two um, planning commission. Um, and we also had a big stakeholder group of uh, property owners and local businesses in town. Um, I think right there is a good blueprint moving forward. It has strategies in there um, about placemaking and outdoor music. And um, as we're going through the zoning update, which specifically on property, uh, we're definitely going to be looking at our uh, older parking requirements. Um, and updating our zoning to make uh, investment in the future in our downtown um, a little bit more possible uh, with private investment. Um, there's going to be that balancing act of trying to keep our eclectic, fun, Hermosa culture uh, and, our, and our historic buildings in place. Um, but how do we change and, and, and help that investment? Because right now we're competing with Manhattan Beach Village. We're competing with the point. We're competing with um, Redondo's done a great job in the Riviera Village. And how do we keep supporting our local businesses um, and, and create that private investment um, is so important. So specifically, I think one thing we're gonna be looking at is the parking requirements. Right now, we've already changed. Um, if there's an intensification of use, if you're going from a lower intensification to a higher intensification, um, and it's underneath 5,000 square feet, you do not have to add the, the extra parking. So that's one thing that we've already done, and I'm excited as we go through the process moving forward to make this city a little bit more business friendly. Thank you. Great. Michael Keegan, why don't you go next? Do you want me to ask the question again? Yeah, could you add some audio? Oh, sorry? Oh, it's alternate questions. Oh, my apologies, oh, moderators. My apologies. Okay, well, Michael Keegan, okay, well, Keegan, we'll go to you the, with the next question. You ready? Okay. okay. On the campaign trail, you've probably had a lot of conversations with business owners. What businesses did you speak to, and what's the best idea you've heard from a business that you'd like to see implemented if elected? Well, I've spoken to a few business owners, Dennis Jarvis and um, Ron Newman and Greg Newman, to name a couple. And, um, they, they, you know, they, they're looking for the city to allow them to, uh, I guess they had a program to string lights in the city of, uh, was an impediment to string lights. They were going to pay for them. Uh, it was going to be paid privately, and we couldn't get that done to, to light up the uh, the lower section of uh, Pier Avenue, and that was killed somehow. And they couldn't get that done. And Dennis Jarvis is concerned with two new big retail spaces becoming available at the uh, 
corners of uh, where the Bank of America is and Citicorp. He's concerned as to how we're going to attract people and um, what kind of businesses we're going to put in there. There's a lot of heavy, heavy lifting to be done down there to make sure that we uh, ensure that we uh, put in businesses that uh, increase traffic to the area and try and get more um, things to buy in the city as opposed to just throwing in new restaurants without uh, any thought to retail. So um, I want to take more input from people like that and um, also to have more events in, in, in the area to generate daytime traffic for some of the merchants. And so uh, I guess what um, we need to do is we did get to do a, a development plan like 30, I think there's 30 things that the, the downtown did. They had, I think, 70 meetings. And then the city put it on the shelf and said they didn't have any money. And so they're not doing any of them right now. So I would uh, like to take that off the shelf and look at cutting some of the costs in the city to put money towards that program. Michael, I'm gonna have to cut I you off there. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, Yanni, why don't we go to you next? Our city is in the middle of, of a comprehensive zoning code update that has a potential to affect the next 20 to 40 years. What changes do you see in our business district over the next five, 10, 20 years and how would you specifically change zoning in our commercial zones to meet the future? You know, that's an excellent question, and it's one that I've reached out to several stakeholders, particularly several planning commissioners to help guide me through that is definitely not my field of expertise. Um, being a 10-year commissioner, third term, I understand the structure of how a city works. Um, if elected, I will work with the mechanism in place, which is speaking to the commission, who will advise us on how to proceed. I will reach out to additional stakeholders and then collaborate with the four other um, elected officials at city council to come to a collaborative um, vision on how to move forward. Once again, I'm not shy to say I'm not an expert, but I have talked to a lot of folks regarding zoning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Brian, I guess we'll go to you next. Events in Hermosa are often, often the source of great foot traffic that we desperately need. The special event permit, which is required for businesses to host an event, is currently limited in the zoning code to four times per year per business and a $650 application fee. The Chamber's Municipal Zoning Code Committee believes that the limit should be removed. What is your position on this and why? Thank you for the question. Yes, I do believe the limit should be re removed. Uh, specifically, the sidewalk sales that you have during the week, if we could move them to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and have them more often, those would help. Our businesses need help, not so much on the weekends. We need Monday through Thursday. And the sidewalk sales are wonderful. They, they do fantastic events, and Michelle, you put on a great event with, with musicians playing out there. I think the sidewalk sales more often uh, would be fantastic. I would also like to bring in um, concerts during the week for schools, School of Rock, Coast Music, other school districts. When we put on shows at the Rock and Brews, I work at the Redondo and the El, El Segundo Rock and Brews, completely sell out crowd for School of Rock completely sell out crowd for Coast Music. The schools that do music and arts, we can have them do shows at our theater, professional shows. That would bring in from around the community, it would bring in a lot of parents. I also think that uh, the theater could be used for, for professional productions, not, not all kids shows. I think we should bring in a distinguished speaker series to our theater, like Redondo Performing Arts does. I think we should bring in, um, we should have other school districts introduced to the junior guards that we have, even during the winter, during the week, that's when we bring in residents from the South Bay, Torrance, El Segundo. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Brian. So I was just corrected. What we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna have each of you answer each question. So we apologize for the mix up there. So, lucky me. So, um, I'll ask the question again. I think that will uh, tune you back into Mike's response, Mike DeToy, and then I'll just move down the line. So, Yanni, if you're ready. Elka. 
Oh, Elka, I'm can so I sorry. Start? Elka, I have to go to you first. I'm sorry. Okay, My apologies. Thank you. Yes. How could I ever forget Elka? All right, here we go. What strategies or ideas do you have to bring commerce and generate additional revenue for both our downtown and non-downtown businesses? Um, well, I've talked to a lot of businesses here um, and also people who want to come and do business in Hermosa Beach, start a business here. And uh, they say that the permitting process is very lengthy. And I think we need to streamline that permitting process. And my goal is, how do we get to yes? We want to have people come here. We want to have people shop here. We want people to open their stores here. And we need to do it expeditiously. Um, I think the uh, city needs a liaison to help those businesses to address their concerns and recruit new stores. Uh, El Segundo does that, and they, uh, I've talked to the mayor there, and they actually go to the Silicon Valley to recruit people to uh, come to El Segundo. And we have a unique opportunity, too, with the Olympics and World Cup coming to uh, Southern California to promote our city and our unique California beach lifestyle. Um, most of all, though, we need to work together and listen to each other and um, make uh, shopping easier, make parking easier, and make it easier for the businesses as well. Great, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go back to question number one, and um, Brian, I'm gonna go to you, if that's okay. What strategies or ideas do you have to bring commerce and generate additional revenue for both our downtown and non-downtown businesses? So a lot of my answer I answered previously in that, and I work at a lot of businesses in town. I'm currently working probably at seven restaurants, and I book artists and talent all over the South Bay. I'm, I'm probably booking six shows a week uh, with other talent. Um, so, and, and I'm working currently with eight restaurants in Hermosa Beach. It's during the week when we need the help. The weekends are always pretty good, and the events that we do on the weekends are always well attended. Tuesday, Thursday, it's, it's really slow, especially, I don't know what happened to summer. Did anybody know what happened? Because it got cold fast. And you know now, now is when the businesses need help. And I think if we do have the sidewalk sales more often, brings in out of town traffic, but have it on a Wednesday instead of always on the weekend, it would help the businesses during the week. Uh, again, I said the, th the theater, we have a beautiful professional theater and a small black box theater upstairs that we are not utilizing nearly to its economic potential, not even close. And we have parking there. Let's, uh, let's get the theater in a professional use. Great, thank you. Okay, Yanni, I'm gonna go to you next on question one again, and then we're gonna go back to Michael Keegan. Um, so question again, Yanni, is what strategies or ideas do you have to bring commerce and generate additional revenue for both our downtown and non-downtown businesses? This is a wonderful question. I feel like I have the ability to address that from my professional side of my life as well as my volunteer commission life. Um, as a professional, I work with Spider, ET, Jax, Gumtree, just to name a few retailers. I also have the unique perspective of seeing what the downtown corridor looks like as somebody who works down there in February on a Wednesday. The traffic is thin. I think the majority of Hermosa Beach sees great weekends when the weather's out and on holidays. I understand what it's like down there. Um, celebrating retail, being mindful of their needs, working collaboratively with them, and simultaneously parlaying that with my services as a commissioner. Um, just in short, I help bring the Rams event back in April, which is known as an economic black hole because a lot of people are waiting for tax returns and they're going out of town to what's called festival season to see Coachella two weekends plus 
stagecoach. So by bringing in the Rams, we encourage people to come back to Hermosa Beach, shop in Hermosa Beach, not leave. That is one event. Then there's Spider Surf Fest and the Surfers Walk of Fame weekend, which I took from a fractured event to a three-day weekend celebrating our beach culture for free. Also, concerts on the beach. This is another example of an event that I was involved with to bring back that helps bring economy and vibrancy and dollars back down to Hermosa Beach. Thank you very much. That is one of many, many ideas I have. Great. OK, Mr. Keegan, I'm going to come back to you with question number one. Now that we're in flow, here we go. So Michael, what strategies, what strategies or ideas do you have to bring commerce and generate additional revenue for both our downtown and non-downtown businesses? Well, I think that, you know, being a long time business owner uh, myself, um, you know, what mainly the city is usually in the way of business. Um, and that's usually the impediment to getting businesses. They, they all have ideas and plans. I mean, we have a economic development group that put 30 uh, uh, strategies into place and none of them are being used. I mean, I think we should pick up the documents that we already have in place and use those. I mean, why would we want to start recreating all new ideas uh, when we can't implement 30 of them that we've already outlined? So my thing would be to pick up the document we just completed after 70 meetings and begin with that. That would be my strategy. Instead of a lot of talk, why don't we just pick up documents that are already in place and we don't need to hire a bunch of people and spend money for it. We just, we already have a plan laid out. Let's use that. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Okay, so we're done with question number one, and now we'll go back to question number two. So I think if I keep my order, you guys will keep me in order. Um, Mr. Detoy, why don't I ask question number two to you, and then we'll get Elka next, and then we'll get everybody to answer question two who has not yet. On the campaign trail, you've probably had a lot of conversations with business owners. What businesses did you speak to, and what's the best idea you've heard from a business that you'd like to see implemented if elected? Thank you for that. Uh, yes, and even not on the campaign trail, visit a lot of businesses, talk to the owners, figure out you know how's, how business is going. Um, I know it was already mentioned, but I want to expand on, on what Brian said. The special event permit was something that came to us um, recently, and it was one of those older ordinances that we have no idea where it came from, and it is getting worked through in the zoning update. Um, so each business is capped at a certain number per year, but each one of those special permits can also be for seven days. So you can have, I think it was 28 days of events over the year, but you can only do it four times and not more than once a month or something. It was something insane. So we're working through that zoning update. I wanna definitely, we're, I've already told staff, we wanna work towards that to get smaller, more events um, that we can activate our parking lots and activate sidewalk sales and make those businesses come up with creative new ideas to draw new business, new new visitors and residents into town um, to go shopping. But overall, I mean, I, I spent two years on Zoom um, doing this EDC plan, and I do think that there's a lot of good ideas. One simple one that um, the former president and CEO of the chamber did, um, one day we're, we're chit-chatting, remember we had the mask up stickers on the, on the sidewalks, said, Jesse, how about we get a QR code, and that can link to um, the website to show all the businesses in town. Um, and she's a doer, so she went out and did it. Um, and I think it was a great, simple, low-cost solution to, to kind of creating that wayfinding. Way great, thank you, Mike. Elka, I'm gonna go to you now with question number two. On the campaign trail, you've probably had a lot of conversations with business owners. What businesses did you speak to, and what's the best idea you've heard from the business that you'd like to see implemented if elected? Um, well, I usually go to uh, shoe stores or clothing stores and uh, the nail salon, places like that, and um, occasionally a surf shop. Um, what I've heard a lot from the business owners is during the week there's not enough foot traffic. And um, they say it's pretty dead sometimes. So uh, I think we have to come up with a plan to get more foot traffic here and promote our downtown businesses and also along PCH and aviation. Now there's a um, media company in town and they are doing the branding for Rodeo Drive. And I'm thinking they might be able to do the same thing for Hermosa Beach. 
Um, I also would like to see some more clothing stores for professional women and moms in town so we don't have to go to Manhattan Beach or uh, Del Amo. Um, most of all, we have to believe in our businesses and support them. I want to shop locally, but I'd like to have stores that I can go to and buy great things at. Great. Thank you. Um, Brian, I think we still have to ask question number two of you. I'll repeat. On the campaign trail, you've probably had a lot of conversations with business owners. What businesses did you speak to, and what is the best idea that you've heard from a business that you'd like to see implemented if elected? Today I got my hair done at Beach Beauty. <laughs> the best idea was she told me to stop cutting my own hair. That is a 100% true story. I also went into ET Surf Shop, and they told me that Yanni's the guy, so I should really stop taking his signs down. <laughs> uh, somebody has been. Now I know who I'm really is. sorry about that, dude. I'm really sorry. Listen, I really work every single day of my life. I'm, I'm with these businesses. I've been working for the Comedy and Magic Club probably 25 years. Um, there's a lot that we can do to help businesses, and you know what it is. I'm talking to you, Dean. The businesses are having a hard time with the extra regulations. Um, they want to do one thing. They forget about changing their conditional use permit. They're not going to do it. They're not going to touch it. I, I can't even tell you the names of the people that I'm working for because they don't want to get on the wrong side of the city. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, they're, they're scared of the city. That's got to stop. We need to communicate in a more respectful fashion. That's why I'm wearing the, the umpire shirt, both at the meetings. And it goes both ways. It, it goes both ways for the community also. The community cannot come to the meetings and just you know, beat up on the council and then you know, think that nothing's going to happen. The businesses need help to get permitting done fast. And if they want to change one thing in their layout, don't make them conform to every single Thank regulation you, that's coming down the road. Thank you, Brian. Till, till, the, till 2030. OK, question number two. Um, I think we have, Yanni, you answered yeah. that one, correct? No, I answered the one regarding business. OK, got you. So let me go to you next. And then I think um, Michael Keegan answered number two. I'm getting a little mixed up, but I think we're back on track now. So Yanni, on the campaign trail, you've probably had a lot of conversations with business owners. What businesses did you speak to, and what is the best idea you've heard from a business that you'd like to see implemented if elected? Thank you. Not just the campaign trail, my everyday life. I'm a 1099 commission-based sales rep. I eat what I kill. So I work closely with Spider Surf, ET, Jax, The Green Store, Bacados, Gumtree, Beachbound Sports, and Waterman's, just to name a few. I listen to them every single day, as I said before. I know what it's like in the off season. I know what it's like not in the weekends. Dennis and Richard over at Spider, they'd like to figure out how to utilize the retail space in front of their store, much like the restaurants. They also noticed a significant um, lack of energy and foot traffic during Labor Day. Richard O'Reilly said, I'm gonna take that project on. I would like to do something to bring people back in town during Labor Day. That's the type of go get it attitude that I appreciate and I would love to pair with. Um, Kathy Knoll over at Cork, Uncork, pardon me, she would like to cut the red tape um, and make the streamlining process to doing business easier. Vok and Betty at Granny's, that's where I hosted my kickoff party this weekend. They want to get more foot traffic to town. Um, one, Jeannie over at Stoke Chocolates, she is so stoked where her business is, but has to deal with a dining deck in front of her house, or pardon me, in front of her business. But she understands that it's a symbiotic relationship and it's an ecosystem we have to collaborate on. So she wants to figure out how we can work together to bring attention. Also, filming. We now have an additional, we have two additional personnel at the city and we can capture more opportunity to bring filming to Hermosa Beach when we historically Thanks, had to turn down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think everybody answered number two, because Michael Keegan, I think I gave you number two initially, uh, question, number two. Uh, question number two. So Elka, so, let me go back to you now. We'll ask uh, question number three of you. 
Our city is in the middle of a comprehensive zoning code update that has the potential to affect the next 20 to 40 years. What changes do you see in our business district over the next 5, 10, and 20 years, and how would you specifically change zoning in our commercial zones to meet the future? Um, I think the one thing I would focus on is parking. Um, even if you live in Hermosa Beach, it's always a drag to come down here and circle and circle till you find parking. And um, that's not good for businesses either. Uh, the zoning, I know one business, she's in the Cyprus area, and she's in an M1 zone, which is a manufacturing zone. And she would like to have her business, it's called Soothe Your Soul, changed to retail. Um, so I think we can expand some of the retail into other parts of the city, and that would um, bring more vibrancy to uh, the Cypress District and other parts of town. Great. So Michael Keegan, I'm gonna go to question number three to you. Our city is in the middle of a comprehensive zoning code update that has a potential to affect the next 20 to 40 years. What changes do you see in our business district over the next 5, 10, and 20 years, and how would you specifically change zoning in our commercial zones to meet the future? Well, I think with two of the largest retail spaces coming available in downtown, the, the two bank spaces, we have to be very cautious as to whether we want to allow retail or restaurant in those, and those will be a big decision. I want to point out that two of um, the candidates, Ryan, don't want to be a killjoy or anything, but Mr. Lang and Mr. Shield, you know, you won't be able to vote on any of these because you're doing so much business with all the businesses nearby. All that 1099 income and everything will pre preclude you from voting on many of these issues. So I think that maybe a, a, a talk with the city attorney would help you understand that, you know, you're not going to be able to vote on a lot of these issues, and that's unfortunate. And so I think that's something that should be known, and I don't want to be a killjoy on that, but that's a big deal. Um, the other thing I want to notice is that when we do an update, you know, uh, and we change the zonings, I'd like to change our conditional use permits situation where if you want to update your uh, CUP and make changes, we should make them low cost to the, to the current people who own these businesses. It's crazy to make someone have to put in a TV or adjust something, make a minor change, remodel your furniture, move a dance floor, anything like that, that you have to go through a full hearing. We need to either get rid of that process entirely and work on it in a, in a, in a simpler fashion or at least lower the cost, make it easier for them to go instead of spending thousands of dollars creating 20 and 30 sets of blueprints. Um, things like that, and try and lower and expedite how businesses can make changes that are currently here. And then also examine how when new businesses come, how can we make it easier Mike, for them I'm gonna have to, to open it there. quicker and faster. I mean, one thing that will help Mike, the city is to not have vacancies sit so long. Because Mike, I have to cut you off there, my friend. Right so sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So... Mike DeToy, you have not answered question number three. Our city is in the middle of a comprehensive zoning code update that has the potential to affect the next 20 to 40 years. What changes do you see in our business district over the next five, 10, 20 years, and how would you specifically change zoning in our commercial zones to meet the future? Perfect, thank you. I um, already kind of touched on this in another answer, but I think the parking requirements are gonna be a big one. Um, these were created in the 1980s, and with that, parking has changed, um, or the way we've traveled has changed, uh, especially with the e-bikes. I know I'm gonna get some booze in that one, but e-bikes and ride sharing and everything else, the requirement for parking um, was too restrictive for many, many years, and that's why we haven't seen as much development or new investment in our downtown businesses. Um, but I also wanna touch on something else. When I ran five years ago, I was told, we will never authorize another full liquor license in this town ever again. Um, and we have authorized four. The Planning Commission gave those recommendations to long-standing good partnership restaurants in our town. Um, and full liquor, I guess. Um, so uh, we have you know, listened, we have the partnership, we are working with our businesses and those who are good businesses in town, um, our partners, um, they have been able to get higher profit drinks um, and their ability to serve. Um, and I think that it has really helped their upper peer restaurants. Um, but I think, you know, 
there are a lot of things. We can talk about um, lower costs for CUP updates, but what we do is we look at our staff time and those hours, um, and that's how we get to those fees. And so if we want to lower those fees, then the general fund's gonna be supplementing our businesses. So it's a holistic conversation on what we wanna do um, moving forward. Thanks, Thank Mike. You. Thank you. Mr. Bryan, you're the last one for question number three. Our city is in the middle of comprehensive zoning code update that has potential to affect the next 20 to 40 years. What changes do you see in our business district over the next five, 10, and 20 years, and how would you specifically change zoning in our commercial zones to meet the future? Thank you. Uh, much of our business district falls in the coastal zone that you have to clear everything through the California Coastal Commission, which is notoriously arduous and a long process, and there's a lot of no's involved. There is a local coastal program that was part of Plan Hermosa 2017. The local coastal plan program uh, should have been implemented by now, and it should carry more weight with the California Coastal Commission, which it does not and is not implemented. Manhattan Beach has a local coastal program that enables them to do more closer to the, closer to the coast. Everything we want to do with businesses, everything we want to do in Hermosa Beach is going to rely on parking. The 30-foot height limit for parking lot D is very difficult. We have to be able to get around that with local coastal program. We have to do that. Um, definitely, the CUP updates have got to be targeted. You cannot make businesses comply with future regulations like electric charging vehicles on the roof because you want to move one thing inside. You need to target it, let people update their conditional use permits per job, and you can comply with the regulations that are in place now or two years from now, not 2030. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Elka, I'm going to go to you next. Events in Hermosa are often the source of great foot traffic that we desperately need. The special event permit, which is required for businesses to host an event, is currently limited in the zoning code to four times per year per business and a $650 application fee. The Chamber's Municipal Zoning Code Committee believes that the limit should be removed. What is your position and why? Um, I think we need to find a balance between what the residents want, what visitors want, and what the chamber and the city wants. Um, I'm not opposed to having Rams and Kings events here. They're great family-friendly um, events that, that we all love. Um, but I want to make sure we don't have an event every single weekend. I live up on Monterey. And when we have the fiesta, sometimes these huge buses come through on the weekend, and it doesn't stop from 9 until 5. Um, so once we get a balance, I think that will serve everyone and bring revenue to the city and um, let us have some fun. Thank you so much. Michael Keegan, I'm going to go to you on that question. Events in Hermosa often are the source of great foot traffic that we desperately need. The special event permit, which is required for businesses to host an event, is currently limited in the zoning code to four times per year per business and a $650 application fee. The Chamber's Municipal Zoning Code Committee believes that the limit should be removed. What is your position and why? Um, I, th I think we can, remo we can remove it. And I think that uh, we want to support more events. I mean, the fiesta's uh, only one time a year now, so I'm not too worried about the fiesta. I mean, it's, uh, I, th I think that having a one time a year is not a big impact in the neighborhoods. And I think that more individual events, more tailored events um, to draw in specific groups and, and at different times. And again, uh, pursuing things uh, on the non-busy times is what we want to do. And many years ago, we had too many events. Uh, the residents came back and we had um, extreme games on the beach and we had um, a lot of stuff going on. This was in the 2000s. And what happened is we did them and then we pulled them back when we got uh, the reaction from uh, the residents because of different issues. And so I think that's uh, the ebb and flow of all events. 
I mean, you fl- you run them, and and if they impact them the next year, you reduce them. I think you you have to just listen to the pulse of the community, and so it's never going to be uh, perfect. It's going to continue to change uh, as it has over the last forty years. So I think we need to make the barriers to get entry easier, and then we can make the adjustments just as easy. So we have to just listen and pay attention. I think this is a simple uh, operation to complete. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Yanni, let me go to you. Question number four. Events in the Hermosa are often the source of great foot traffic that we desperately need. The special event permit, which is required for businesses to host an event, is currently limited in the zoning code to four times per year per business and a $650 application fee. The Chamber's Municipal Zoning Code Committee believes that that limit should be removed. What is your position on this and why? Thank you very much. Um, As the co-author of the special events policy guide for the Parks and Rec Department, put a lot of time in this over the last 10 years. Uh, I definitely feel that we can remove that $650. There is a fee waiver reduction mechanism set up within that policy guide. Um, and I, we do pay close attention to the needs and the overall comfort of the city. The downtown commercial area is such a delicate ecosystem. You rarely see other quaint beach towns like ours that have residents and commercial right next to each other. As a Parks and Rec Commission, we are very mindful of that. We, as a result, we put in something called the Nothing Weekend at the beginning and the end of the summer that gives the beach back to the community. So it's not congested with the tents and bleachers and everything and amplified music all summer long. That is a mechanism that we've had in place for many, many years because we listen to the residents. And also, we have event limitations throughout the year between peak season and off season. And we also have mechanisms in place to encourage new event producers to come and take advantage of the off season, so not to burden our community between Labor Day or Memorial Day and Labor Day. Um, I'm very proud of that. And please reach out and ask me any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yanni. We are in, in flow now, everybody, so stick with me. Keep to your 90 seconds. We're going to make our time frame. So, Mr. Detoy, this question is for you now. Events in the Hermosa are often the source of great foot traffic that we desperately need. The special event permit, which is required for businesses to host an event, is currently limited in the zoning code to four times per year per business and a $650 application fee. The Chamber's Municipal Zoning Code Committee believes that the limit should be removed. What is your position on this and why? Perfect, thank you. So I'm gonna redirect the conversation. This is not about Fiesta, this is not about the Rams Day. This is for small businesses to apply to host an event on site. And why did this come up? It came up because during COVID, everything had to go outside. And we had some great ingenuity and I see Adam back there and he was using a parking lot to host a silent disco. And then when COVID ended and all the restrictions kind of came back and we had to kind of go back to conforming with what our zoning is, we're like, wait a second, we can't do this every other Friday. Um, And so with that, we had to bring everything and find that balance, and that's what we're going through right now in the zoning update, is finding that balance. How do we live with outdoor music, um, which I want to embrace and I have embraced? How do we keep that balance of the special events to making sure that maybe a silent disco isn't too, or live music outside isn't too impactful to the businesses next door? That is what we're talking about. And it, this happened because of our current council um, embracing outdoor dining and embracing live events outside to keep us safe during the pandemic. And again, when we came back from it, we realized how restrictive our old zoning was and how do we move forward with that. And I'm really excited to continue to be part of that conversation and supporting our small businesses to draw that foot traffic in during the winter time. I don't think silent discos can be too impactful. So. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so now we're going to go to our, uh, the last couple of questions. They're briefer, and I'll just read them one time and see if you can remember it, and we'll have you answer. So why don't we go with uh, Elka, give you the first round. How do you think the three-quarter cent sales tax would impact Hermosa businesses, and what are your top three priorities for the, using the additional revenue? Um, I am opposed to the three-quarter percent sales tax increase because 
I think we need to do everything we can to give our businesses a competitive edge. And um, you've all seen it. You've walked downtown. There's a lot of empty storefronts. And adding a tax, I don't think, helps the situation. Uh, the city says they need the $3 million to fund police and paramedics. But um, the department is fully staffed. Uh, we have a real-time crime center that cost $1 million, and we have a mobile unit to help the homeless that cost $1 million. So we don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. And I think um, before the city comes and asks us for more funding, um, I think they need to tighten their belts and show that they can do some cutbacks as well. And I'm particularly concerned about this fact sheet that went out um, with taxpayer dollars. And I feel it's very one-sided. It kind of promotes the sales tax, but doesn't give the other side. Uh, when I'm elected, I will give both sides of an issue and let the voters decide. Thank you so much. Brian, I'm going to go to you on that same question. So what are the three priorities you see for the use of the additional revenue? I'm also opposed to the three-quarter cent sales tax. I'm, it is on the ballot, so um, the, the residents will decide on November 5th if you want to add a three-quarter cent sales tax. Um, I, don't, I think it is burdensome to the businesses, uh, both in adding to expense of their customers and their um, accounting work. Uh, I'm also opposed to the city sending out, this is a beautiful three color brochure that they use our tax money to produce to get more of our tax money. <laughs> I don't like that. If you see the presentation from the Beach City's Health District, it was a little less glamorous, okay? Uh, it was more factual. He was like Joe Friday, just the facts, you know, Tom Beckley, he did that. You remember Joe Friday? Anybody? Nobody? All right. Whatever. Um, I, I also don't think the, the, the city manager's budget in the last four and a half years has doubled, okay? That's a lot of money now. It's, it's increasing. I, I do not believe that the extra revenue is going to go to everything that they say it's going to go to here. It's general fund money, and they will spend it on lawsuit settlements, probably. Thanks, Brian. Thank you so much. Michael Keegan, we're going to go to you next. Um, the question is about the three-quarter cent sales tax, uh, how it would impact Hermosa businesses. What would be your top three priorities for using the additional revenue? Well, I'm, I'm against the sales tax measure for a different reason. Well, I'm, I'm against it on many reasons, many fronts. But one of the main reasons was is we put this on a ballot two years ago and it failed. And in the interim, we did nothing. We didn't do a, a report or anything on why it failed. Uh, we took no action on it. We just waited two more years and the city put it back on the ballot, decided to spend more money advertising it within this, you know, using city funds instead of examining the reasons that it lost and they didn't you know uh, talk to a consultant on, on elections on, on this type of thing just to get a, some feedback uh, simple feedback on why it failed and so my thing was is that you know are we going to just every two years try and collect the tax whether it's this or raise the UUT or or raise uh, some other taxing agents some other tax that we can create to pass on to the residents to cover general fund monies I think that we, the city can always use more revenue. We can always do more. We're, we're unfunded for many projects. We need a city yard update. We need to uh, handle city hall. Um, so, I mean, the, the, the $3 million is is would help. But I'm against the way we go about it. We we sweep things under the rug. We spent a million and a half dollars on a legal case against a business, CrossFit. Do we do any evaluation of what happened there? What did we do right? What, what did we do wrong? How did a business that's probably only worth a half a million dollars get a million and a half dollars of our tax dollars? I mean, we closed down a business for no reason, essentially, and we don't understand what happened. Michael, we, we never evaluate any of our failures. Sorry. We're never accountable. Michael, I got to cut you off there, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Yanni, you are next, my friend. Thank you very much. Um, I'm opposed to the sales tax. 
I feel that we are dying from a thousand paper cuts. Inflation's getting out of control. I'm a, I have a family of five, can't go to the store without spending an arm and a leg. I know many seniors in the community live on a fixed income, so every penny does count. Um, but ultimately, it is the will of the voters. And the question is, if it passes, how would I spend it? First and foremost, I would spend it on public safety. Um, if you were to pay attention to Chief LeBaron's um, presentation two or three weeks ago, as a result of enhanced technology that the police used, they took down, took, they took four guns off the street. Since then, they continue to take three more. Thank you very much. That's a result of technology, public safety. Then also, I would um, congruently be running, or um, at the same time, be running, working with the Oversight Committee, uh, the Citizens Oversight Committee, see how it can be well spent. But the question is, how would I spend it? Um, Downtown lighting, that is a promise that was given to the downtown businesses a long time ago. Let's take care of that. That goes hand in hand with public safety. And quite frankly, I think we have a PR problem. I would like to hire a PR firm to help enhance our storytelling at Hermosa Beach, particularly that we have the Olympics four years away. I wanna make sure that the world knows how good our volleyball sand is, our surfing history. And we average 1.2 million tourists a year Let's see how we can, and half of that are one-time tourists. Let's figure out how to capture that through storytelling with public relations. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, uh, do you want me to repeat the question? Or are you I okay? think I got it. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be the one you can shoot arrows at. Um, I, I am supportive of this three-quarter cent sales tax because it is a local controlled mechanism. Um, the county has another competing measure regarding homelessness to get rid of the sunset and increase it by 25 cents. I'm opposed to that. How we spend it is gonna be up to the five people on the dais with recommendations from the oversight committee. That is one thing that we did change. Um, Manhattan Beach is asking for a 50 cent increase. Torrance is already at 10%. Hawthorne, 10.25. Santa Monica, Gardena, Lawndale, Carson, Arcadia, Lomita, Pasadena, South of Pasadena, all at 10.25. Of the 9.5 right now, we only get 1%. Um, so, the county gets two and a half, the state gets six. Yes, it would increase $3 million. Uh, many of you in the room had no on O signs, right? Yes, we don't want oil drilling in town. Well, we had to pay a settlement of $17.5 million. Initially, it was around a million dollars a year. It's down to about $750,000 due to refinancing of the bonds. $750,000 every year until 2035. So we paid over $8 million since 2015. That's $8 million not going to our parks, not going to our downtown, not going to our sidewalks, not going to the lighting, and will continue through 2035. The 20 year sunset matches that. So with inflation, everything else. One of the first few minute meetings I had was to save the police. I think most of you are in that room. With that, we had a new MOU, it cost money. Fire department, $500,000. In 2027, they're gonna ask for another $1.5 million a year Thanks, for LA Mike. County Fire. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Okay, Elka, I'm gonna to go to you <clears throat> for our next question. It has been stated that Hermosa Beach is sometimes not business friendly, yet the city has stepped up in the past with initiatives like red metered bags and street sidewalk dining. The criticism usually focuses on challenges in the opening or modifying a business. Do you believe the city is doing enough to support businesses and how would you, how could it improve? Uh, I think the city did a good job during COVID, and I give them props for that. But from what I've heard lately, it's a very difficult uh, thing to get permits, to get CUPs, and uh, the fees are excessive. Uh, the in-lieu parking fees uh, went from about $30,000 to $116,000. That's insane. They didn't. Um, nobody wants to... Uh, they didn't go to that, you're right. Uh, they are thinking of making them 116,000. So uh, I think uh, the city really needs to look at how they can work together with businesses. Now I've talked to some businesses along Pier Avenue and they've said no one from the city has ever talked to them. And we're 1.4 square miles. There's no reason why they can't stop by and say hello um, and have the chamber involved as well to improve our downtown district and any other business in the city. Thank you so much. 
Brian, I'm going to go to you on that same question. Perception and reality are two different things doing business in Hermosa Beach. I know my friends on the council, they are wonderful people. They are. We, we talk and they want to do the right thing for Hermosa Beach. The businesses don't feel through, whether it be in you know, the, the planning or if, whether it be you know, inspections or the permitting process can get slowed down. Um, and they don't feel that they're being communicated with from the city. They also hesitate to communicate back to the city because they don't want to be a target. That can't happen in Hermosa Beach anymore. We, we've got to talk to each other very respectfully. We know the businesses keep this community afloat. The residents work at a lot of these businesses. We are all one community here. It's not us and them. The businesses feel the permitting process takes way too long. I wonder if we can't move the permitting process to a time-based approval, whereas businesses apply for a permit to move a piece of the wall over, over this way. And the, the permit hasn't been looked at for, you know, pick a time, six months, nine months. If, it's, if it passes that allotted time that the city council has agreed on, then that permit can go through, or if they paid for the permit already, which most of them have, they get that money back. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Michael Keegan, I'm going to go to you. Do you need me to repeat the question, sir? Question, sir? Um, sure. sure. It has been stated that Hermosa Beach is sometimes not business friendly, yet the city has stepped up in the past with, with initiatives like red metered bags and street sidewalk dining. The criticism usually focuses on challenges in opening or modifying a business. Do you believe the city is doing enough to support the businesses, and how could it improve? Well, I think we just need to change our, the way we look, we look at businesses. We need to be more accountable in the time it takes to get a permit. We don't, we don't follow any metrics. We don't say a permit was brought in on day one, and how many days did it take to get out? We have no reports like that. We need more tracking to evaluate our employees. Uh, I think there needs to be some accountability for something that takes two years that should only take one year or six months that should take three months. We do, we do not do any tracking. It's like we don't want to know how long it takes. I think we need more openness on the permitting process and also on CUP changes. We need to cut that. I mean, some people say a hearing costs so much money. Maybe we don't need to bring every staff person to every meeting, these planning commission meetings. I mean, some of them, we should have maybe, maybe special hearings for CUPs and we don't need so much legality in there. These, a lot of people are just moving dance floors and you know we're going to the county for, I think my sound went off. Yep, you're good. Thank you so much, Michael. I know it's a little hard remotely there. Okay, um, Yanni, I'm going to go to you next. Do you need me to repeat the question? No, I, I have it. Fantastic. Um, I've got it. Uh, yeah, perception is reality. And along the campaign trail, I have been hearing um, a thought process that the city is a business unfriendly. Breaks my heart. Um, as somebody who's a board of directors on the Chamber of Commerce and somebody who does business and has done business with the local um, community for quite some time, I want to change that. When I heard somebody mention, Nobody has come into my business. Well, Yanni Lang does. Yanni Lang has. He will. I have the ear of the community. Um, and working collaboratively with our local businesses is at the center of changing this perception. Um, also, we have to keep in mind that the economic development strategy, number 29, we have a business liaison now. Let's activate them more aggressively. Let's get them busy. Let's get them visiting the city or the businesses too and reporting back to us. Um, this is a complex conversation, but through one-on-one -on -one engagements, I think we can solve this problem. Thank you very much. Great. Mr. Mike DeToy, you are up. Thank you. Um, so the, in lieu fees, they actually had a CP, or a CIP, or sorry, CPI uh, increase tied to them, which we have not honored. Um, if we were, the, the in-lieu fees would be about double what they current are. 
the figure that was thrown out earlier was the cost of building one parking uh, spot in a five-story parking structure is 130,000. That was a reference in the staff report in the last meeting. Um, three of us were, uh, including the mayor and then uh, a, a lot of senior level staff were at the chamber walk around on Upper Pier, um, where there were a lot of business owners. Um, Joe San Clemente was their public work director. We were, we were all there and we're all listening. We're all, we've all been very accessible. Um, all of our phone numbers are listed publicly. Uh, if there's an issue at Uncorked, Kathy will call me um, if, if she, there's an answer to staff. And that's, that's how I have been on council for the last five years. I've been approachable. I've had those communications with city staff. Um, and I think we have worked through a lot of great things. A lot of the issues that are identified in the questions tonight are because we're in COVID and there was this rebirth of how we enjoy this Mediterranean lifestyle. And coming, it's, it shouldn't be an attack on the city. This is just the growing pains. A lot of the CUP issues, it's easy to throw darts at, but that is a buy right property change. So that is why it needs to be carefully done. Um, if Justin Massey, I see back there, owns a business and he wants to get full liquor and open till 2 a.m. and right now he doesn't sell any of it, that property value, when he goes to sell it next year, is through the roof. So we have, the, through the zoning, Thanks, is Mike. our currency. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so listen, if we cooperate on the last question, then we're gonna go into the rapid fire round. So work with me right now. Um, Yanni, I'm gonna start with you if you don't mind. I know you just spoke, but let me go back to you. City staff recently suggested raising the parking in Luffy over 120,000 up from the current 28,000, which is comparable to nearby beach cities. The chamber believes such a large increase would discourage new businesses and make it unaffordable for small business owners to open in Hermosa. What are your thoughts on the proposed increase? Well, I will always be in support of small business in Hermosa Beach. Um, I think uh, as I've spoke here over the evening, and those of you who've worked with me for the last, you know, shoot, I was a manager at Pure Surf, I was a manager at Spider, I've done events at Sangria, I've done events at Waterman's, so I understand, and I will work collaboratively with what the small businesses need, and if they're opposed to something like this, we'll figure out a solution. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, let's see, I have Elka next. Um, how many of you know what in lieu parking fees are? Okay, um, I thought Maybe I should explain it. So when a business wants to change owners and they go from maybe a store to a restaurant, they have to provide more parking spaces. If they don't have parking spaces available or they, they can pay for them. So the city is recommending a $116,000 fee for these parking spaces, which is more than Beverly Hills which is more than Santa Monica, and um, it's prohibitive for businesses to finance something like that when they've already put so much into launching their dreams. I think we need to really be cognizant of the risks these businesses take, and we need to make sure we make it easy for them to have businesses here. And let me tell you, these aren't big corporations that come here. A lot of the small mom and pop stores are locally owned. And I want to support them, and I know you do too. Thank you so much. Brian? So it is very tough to open a business uh, in Hermosa Beach. And the in lieu fees, there's just not a lot of space. So probably. 25% or more of the businesses that open in Hermosa have to pay a parking in lieu fee. And it's, it is prohibitive. And a lot of businesses just don't make it past that requirement. Um, the, the parking in our sweet little town has always been an issue. I, I, again, I'm gonna go back to the local coastal program that should have been implemented by now uh, to allow changes to parking structures throughout the city, whereas residents who might have an extra car can, can leave, them, leave them there. 
without it costing an arm and a leg. And if we can identify certain areas around the city where we can do parking, it would alleviate the business need for extra parking as well. Uh, I, I do think the parking in Luffy is too high. Great. Can Michael Keegan hear us, Michelle? Yeah. Michael, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Would you like me to repeat the question, sir? Is the parking and loop fees. Correct. Uh, the parking and loop fees are currently 28000 and I think that that should be raised to a higher level and maybe not to 119000 We probably should raise it to the a level between there somewhere and maybe add a CPI where it goes up each year or some type of increase each year. So eventually it catches up to the cost of construction. I think to implement that big a change is sort of negligent on our part for not keeping up with it over the years. So I think that as far as, you know, regulations, I think again, you know, trying to make it easier for new businesses to start is, is a real goal. So. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay, Mr. Mike Detroit, you're the last one on this question before we go to rapid fire round. Thank you. Um, staff did not recommend that $130,000. That was, as I said, a demonstration on how much it costs to build one space in a five story parking structure. Um, what we did discuss at that last council meeting was how we got here. There was a CPI uh, adjustment that is attached for the policy. The city has not adjust that, adjusted that. And um, just to demonstrate how big or small of a problem it is, I, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. Um, since 2000, there's been 23 in loose spaces. Uh, as I said, what we have changed is that higher intensification of properties, we have not required the additional parking. Um, so I think, I think it's 5,000 square feet. If I'm wrong, someone can correct me. But if, you're, if the business is less than 5,000 square feet and you go from office to restaurant, you do not need to add those new parking now. You don't need to pay in lieu fees. The other option is we get rid of in lieu fees. If we got rid of in lieu fees, then if you can't provide that parking on site, then you're not gonna be able to build. So there's the give and take of that. Um, but as I said, it's only been 23 spots since 2000. Um, and with that, just the inflation on the 28.9, which should be about double to about 60,000. So I do think it needs to go up. By no means am I saying 130,000. Um, staff wasn't either. That was a demonstration on the cost of what it takes to actually build a parking spot in today's dollars. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, thanks for hanging out. We are in our third round, our third segment of this forum. So we're gonna call this the lightning round. These questions are intended to have simple answers. If you'd like to elaborate or explain your answer, please don't. We will begin where... <laughs> <laughs> we will get begin where lot. we left off with Mike DeToy starting. <laughs> You're expected to answer the question quickly and simply. No long answers. I will cut you off if you elaborate. In one brief sentence, without using the words transparency or business friendly, <laughs> why, do, why do you believe you are the strongest candidate for city council? Be brief. Thank you. Um, over the past five years, I've worked collaboratively uh, <laughs> to try to make sure that information is distributed in an accurate manner, and I've worked and listened respectfully to all stakeholders involved. One sentence. Thank you so much. Brian. Oh, Thomas. I'm, I'm sorry. Thomas. That was a pause? Was oh, Thomas. I'm so sorry. No, we're good. We're good. Thanks. So. <laughs> I'm getting better, huh? All right. Actually, Brian, I'm going to bounce over to you next. One, uh, one brief sentence without using words transparency or business friendly. Why do you believe you're the strongest candidate for the city council? I'm the referee. If you saw last week's meeting, that's what we need in this town. And it goes both ways to the public talking to the city council, the city council talking to the public. And a lot of you do know me. I've worked with some of the toughest business people in town for 30 years. And I'm still with them. Because I, I can say again. Oh, I'm sorry. We we're done. Oh, one, sentence yeah. we one sentence. Yes. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> okay, uh, Elka, I'm going to go to you next. One sentence. Um, okay. I have covered this city. I have written about uh, local businesses. I've told your stories. Um, I have 
the inquisitiveness to get to the bottom of things and to get you the answers you need so you can make a good decision about issues that affect your lives. Thank you. Mr. Keegan, you want to take that one? One sentence? Oh, he's froze. I'll guess what, Yanni, we're going to go to you next. Uh, do you want me to repeat the question? No, it's okay. Go for um, it. I'll let my resume speak for me. 10 years Parks and Rec Commissioner. I have led by example and have brought a lot of success to the community. I have over 10 years of video footage. Please, you can find it online if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get Michael Keegan on? Who's the phone? Is he on the phone? Oh. Uh, oh, Michael, can you hear me? <laughs> can you try muting that phone? Check, check. Can you hear me, Michael? Should we try to move forward and then come back? Yeah. Okay. I would like to answer for Michael Keegan. He... No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where that came from. No, that's yeah. not going to fly. Okay, here we go. Next question, lightning round. Um, is he there? Okay, next question. Um, we all have businesses we consider Hermosa gems. Which one tops your list and why? Michael DeToy, let's just start with you. One sentence? One business. One business. I'm going to say Martha's. Okay. Yanni? Spider Surf. Mm. Brian? The Comedy and Magic Club. Fantastic. Elka? Uh, details, shoe store. Fantastic. And I assume Mr. Keegan is still offline? Okay. Let's go to question number three. How do you envision Hermosa's parking needs evolving over the next 10 years? And what changes should be prioritized to address them? Elk, I'm going to start with you on that side. The parking needs uh, increasing, you said? Yeah, what are the needs evolving over the next 10 years? Uh, I think we'll need more parking and uh, for bikes, for cars. And um, I think we need to address that to keep the foot traffic going, to have people shop locally and to um, bolster our businesses. Great. Brian, I'm going to go to you next. And then if we have Michael Keegan on, I can round back to him. Brian? In 10 years, maybe we'll all have flying vehicles like the Jetsons, so we won't have to worry about it. But until then, in the uh, Fullerton Consulting uh, prop, uh, plan that they submitted to the city uh, for the new Civic Center facilities, there are two identified parking areas that would go both subterranean and above ground that the city owns. But we have to get around the California Coastal Commission, so local coastal plan again. Thank you very much. Yanni? Uh, parking's always been an issue. You can go to the Hermosa Beach Historical Society and see covers of the newspaper referencing that. Um, I feel like we keep our parking meters where they're at. Let's, I was one of the few people who stood up against moving it down to 8 a.m. and keeping it at 10 a.m. Um, I do believe that finding an appropriate and tasteful location for additional parking is something that we are going to have to address. Um, but right now, 10 years is around the corner, and let's leave the meters where they're at right now. Thank you. Um, Mike DeToy, I'm going to go to you, but I just want Michael Keegan to know I'm going to come back and ask him three questions quickly after Michael DeToy's response here. So your response. Uh, parking is still going to be important in 10 years, but properly placed parking is going to be even more important. All of our parking is down at the coast, unlike other neighboring cities where it's further up. Now, properly placed upper pier parking will be vitally important for upper pier businesses. Great. Michael Keegan, can you hear me? Um, well, a little difficult hearing you. Can you speak up, cop, 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 cop? Yes. How's that? A little better? A little better. What's the question? I'm going to ask you three lightning round questions they've already answered, so if you could answer quickly. First question. Hello? 
Can you hear me, Michael? Michael, Michael, Michael. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move forward and we're going to have the uh, candidates give their closing statements. Each candidate will have one minute to elaborate on any topic, summarize their thoughts, and share their website. You will get a 15-second warning. Please do not exceed one minute. And um, why don't we start with Elka? We'll just start with you. Ladies first. Okay. Um, thank you all for being here, and thank you to the chamber for hosting this. This is the first of our debates, and I have to say I was a little nervous, and I feel much more comfortable um, with this crowd. You've been great. Um, my uh, platform is pretty simple. Uh, we need safe streets, smart spending, and more communication between city and residents, and we need to support our local businesses. Um, I think these are all goals that we can achieve, and um, we're going to have to address them and work together to solve these important issues for the city, because I love this city, I know you love this city, so let's make it the best it can be. Fantastic. Brian? Thank you all for coming. Uh, I, I look forward to speaking to you all after. Uh, my website is brianshield.com. We have uh, literature in the back. Um, the people that work for the city live in the city. Um, we have to remember, though, the city of Hermosa Beach and the city council work for us, the residents of Hermosa Beach. And for, for them to drag their feet on projects like the Clark Building and the 14th Street bathrooms and other um, capital improvement projects that are laying in limbo for years and years. I mean, they have to open the Clark Building if, if they're not gonna finish it. And I think we should bring back Friday work for the city. Great, Yanni, you wanna go next? Yeah, absolutely, thank you everybody. The city doesn't need a referee, they need a, a friendly face at city council meetings. I am that friendly face. You can see how I run my meetings at, the ch uh, pardon me, at Parks and Rec. Um, I'm here for everybody. I also want to remind everybody that we do have the aviation corridor that can't be ignored. I would like to activate the Barsha parking lot to take the secret sauce that we've applied in downtown Hermosa and bring it up there. Let's host some events up there. Let's have e-bike training with pedal aces up there. Let's utilize that space. Let's celebrate our prospect corridor. Um, thank you, everybody. Please go to my website, yannilang.com. I have assembled an amazing list of uh, folks who have endorsed me, past councilmen and women. I also have Fletcher from Pennywise who's endorsing me, so I'm pretty stoked. I think I'm a very well-rounded candidate that touched all aspects of Hermosa Beach. I love Hermosa. Thank you, Yanni. Mike DeToy, we'll go to you next, and then we'll see if Mr. Keegan's on, and then I have an exciting closing statement. Thank you all for being in attendance. Thank you for your moderation. Thank you to the chamber. Um, it's been wonderful hearing everyone's vision for Hermosa Beach, and I'm gonna continue listening to yours. Um, over the last five years on city council, I've done just that. Uh, before every meeting, I post an abbreviated agenda, single page, on my social media page, trying to increase communication. So if you want to go back, you can go back to 2019. My campaign in my last five years on city council have been about quality of life and public safety. It's my forte. Uh, I want to make sure that my family, when I leave to go to the fire station, is safe. My wife and two kids in the school district, um, and making sure that they're safe. Hermosa Beach is my home. I love this town. I wish I grew up here. I tell everyone that. I told Rick that. But I wish I was lucky enough to grow up here. I want to protect the small town culture um, and protect its vibrant local economy and its quality of life. Thanks again for your time this evening. Website's MikeDetoy.com. Social media for the campaign is Detoy for Hermosa. Um, and I would love to get, grab some literature. Cell phone list is on there. Sorry, Millie. And can we get it? Can we get uh, Mr. Keegan with the closing statement? Doesn't seem like it. Okay, so you get to listen to my exciting statement. All right. So thank you all for coming tonight. If you're not a member of the chamber, you can join uh, the movement now at the hbchamber.net. If you're not a member of the chamber foundation, you can join that too online. Ballots will be mailed starting in early October. 
We will be hosting a candidate mixer next month. Stay tuned for information on where and when. On behalf of the Chamber and the Board of Directors, we thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you. Thank you.